Welcome to this week's episode of The Knowledge Bomb. I'm Nick Fowler, and this week we talk about how to hijack your parasympathetic system. So this week I want to take about three minutes and talk a little bit about our nervous system. Our nervous system is really, really important uh, as athletes. First, uh, there, there's many different parts of our nervous system. I want to talk specifically about our sympathetic system and our parasympathetic system. And first, let's go ahead and define uh, briefly as athletes what our sympathetic system is. And so our sympathetic system is attached to our flight or fight response, right? So anything that is going to get you kind of jacked up, uh, ready to go to war, uh, you know, basically uh, survival uh, instincts and survival physiology, that's how you can start thinking about your sympathetic system. Uh, there's a bunch of hormonal uh, reactions that are associated with it. There's a bunch of benefits to that, right? Um, last week I talked a little bit about coffee and how that can really cultivate a sympathetic system. So this week I want to focus on the parasympathetic system. The parasympathetic system is the key, really, to becoming a better athlete. And what I mean by that is it's going to help us as athletes, as human beings, recover. And as, as we know, the recovery and our effort and opportunity to recover is really where uh, a lot of our, our gains happen, right? We can come into the gym, we can hit it hard, but if we're not recovering, it's not going to mean anything. So how do we cultivate a parasympathetic uh, state, right? A state of recovery, uh, a state of healing and repairing. Really, there's five things I want to talk about. They can be uh, done any time in the day. The closer to post-workout, right, right after you work out, the more effective they're going to be. Uh, really, the first thing you guys should be thinking about is a cool down. Uh, think about going in, uh, you've just worked out, your sympathetic system is just, you know, been hammered, right? You're just in this state of, of fight or flight. And now we want to start transitioning into a parasympathetic or a state of recovery. And so, really, you can think about uh, putting a lot of focus and time and thought into a cool down. A lot of people, I think a lot of us don't think about cool downs as being that important. But think about coming into the gym, right? You've just hit it hard, you, you smashed your system, you stressed your body, and then you're just going to pack up and leave. Uh, take some time to cool down. That can be really easy movement, uh, you know, animal walks. It can be, uh, you know, basically some uh, easy mobility, more movement based. And then the big piece is uh, a cool down that is aerobically based. So you can think about jumping on an air bike, spinning for 10 minutes, intermixing some movement, uh, kind of active mobility in there. Uh, and that will be a huge, huge piece to kind of jump starting the parasympathetic system. So that's number one. Number two, you can start spending some time on a foam roller. Now, foam rollers, there's a lot of um, debate out there about their benefits and their use and whether you should be uh, using a foam roller or not. I'm a, I'm a fan of using a foam roller after training uh, to cultivate local parasympathetic responses. And what I mean by that is that anytime you, you add compression right, to muscles, uh, to your body, it's going to start cultivating a parasympathetic system. This is just what happens, right? So um, for all of you guys who roll out prior to training, uh, think about what you're doing. You're really just cultivating a parasympathetic system when, when we want to cultivate a sympathetic system. So take that foam rolling session, uh, maybe it's more of a social thing, right, in the beginning of your workout, put it to the end after your cool down. So the next thing you can focus on is post-workout nutrition, right, specifically uh, carbohydrates. You want to focus on getting in high glycemic carbohydrates uh, as soon as possible. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty well known that post-workout nutrition is a huge part of recovery. Uh, focusing on the, uh, the, the, you know, the carbohydrate intake will help cultivate this parasympathetic uh, system. You can think about what it's uh, allowing our bodies and our minds to signal in us, right? We're getting fueled, we're getting fed, now we can relax, if that makes sense. So there's a couple great choices out there for you in terms of post-workout uh, carbohydrate. A uh, highly branched cyclic dextrin is my favorite. Uh, it's, it's probably the fastest absorbing. Uh, you can get it in raw form from places like True Nutrition. Uh, you can look at um, you know, pre-packaged uh, versions of it. You can just Google it online. 
Uh, it's definitely what I recommend. Uh, I get it separately and add it to my protein. Um, so it's just a kind of a standalone thing. So if you're having a heavy lifting session uh, where you're, you're kind of you know, not hitting it hard, you can still get your protein in and maybe just a little bit of uh, you know, post-workout carbohydrate. And if you've come in super intense 20-minute uh, breathing session, you know, threshold session, whatever that might look like, then you might want more carbohydrate. That is a whole different topic in itself. But getting in post-workout carbohydrate, huge, right? Uh, the fourth thing that you can go, uh, go do is when you get home, think about a, a contrast shower or a cold bath. Now, uh, there's a lot of research out there that suggests that uh, ice baths are actually a little bit more stressful and damaging to the system, uh, both locally uh, in, in terms of muscle structure and uh, systemically in terms of your nervous system. And so think about more of a cold bath, right? We want a, a more of a flush and to promote circulation. And so something really easy to do is you can hop in the shower, right? Do your thing and then slowly turn that, that hot shower to cold uh, for as long as you can stand it and as cold as you can stand it. And as soon as it gets there, slowly kind of creep it back into the warm. And if you go through uh, two or three, four cycles of that, uh, you'll, you'll have great, great results in terms of uh, recovery, right? Both, both uh, physiologically uh, and neurologically. So that's one thing you can do. Now, the, the fifth and final one is just allowing yourself some, um, some guided uh, meditation, some guided breathing, some really mindfulness space uh, as, as close to your workout or after your workout as possible. Um, think about, you know, you're all geared up, went to the gym, two hours, you just hit it hard, you're coming out. The mind and our perception of stress and our perception of what's going on affects us uh, physically. So taking 20 minutes and you know, either getting some guided breathing in, uh, Ram Wat is a great, great opportunity to, to kind of um, you know, get some mobility in and uh, you know, kind of some headspace, if you will. Headspace is another great app, but I would just recommend something. It doesn't have to be long, 10, 20 minutes, uh, to really kind of um, you know, pull everything together and finalize it. So to recap, you can add this to your list of things to do after you work out, right? One, cool down. Two, get on the foam roller, right? Roll around, get the local muscle structures compressed. Uh, number three, post-workout nutrition. Find a high glycemic carbohydrate that's gonna help get you into a recovery state that much faster. Number four, think about contrast showers. It can be uh, cold, hot, you can get into a cold bath, but something uh, like that will help greatly. Now the last and final, uh, make space for some meditation, guided, uh, guided breathing, whatever, whatever you call it, whatever it looks like. Ramwad, again, is a great option for this. Stick to those five things to hijack your parasympathetic system, and you'll see your gains start going through the roof.